Hey, God bless you, friends. Listen, I'm so happy to have you join us today for the Truth Encounter broadcast. Listen, God has an amazing word for you today. I believe it's really going to bless and encourage your life today. Uh, real quick, before we jump in, I just want to invite you to the Truth Church. God is doing some amazing things among His people. The Spirit of God is moving. People are being healed, delivered, and set free. And God is just showing Himself strong and mighty. So listen, I don't know where you are and what you're facing today. But listen, I want to encourage you to get to the Truth Church and experience all that God has for you. All right, come on, let's go into today's message. So I'm still in this series that I started on last week called Make His Name Great Again. And as you all know, the name I'm talking about is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. I showed a video last week and there are many of you here that weren't here last week. And so I asked him to queue up the video and prepare to show it for me again on today so let me know when y'all ready i think what was interesting is that she said that um jesus tells mike pence things to say um, when was she around I mean, mike pence though well because obviously she was around him because she she knows more uh, a lot more than i think that, that we all know about mike pence but I, what i do know about mike pence is i went to law school in indiana he is a hated figure there actually he's not very popular at all and i think when you have a mike pence that now sort of puts this religious veneer on things and calls people values voters i think we're in a dangerous situation look i'm catholic I, i'm a faithful person but i don't know that i want my vice president um you well, know speaking in tongues and having jesus like, speak like to i him. said before i don't know if i want it's that it's one thing to talk to jesus it's another thing when jesus talks to you exactly okay well that's different if I'm not correct. But no, I, I'm think, hearing voices. You know, Joy, as a, it, it, as, as, as a, as a Christian, that's just part par for the course. You talk to Jesus, Jesus talk back. What concerns me is how long is the conversation with Jesus? But Jesus is Jesus. telling him to say things. I mean, but that's what I'm saying. You know, if you, if you talking to, you know, because I talk, Wait, I Jerry, ask Jesus Jerry. for a parking space. And he talk Thank you. Uh, as you all could see, one of the things about this video that really, really bothered me was that when they took the, the liberty to call what we do in the faith, praying in the spirit, and talking to Jesus, having a relationship with our God, they refer to it as mental illness. Do y'all hear me? This went out over mainstream media, millions of people watching who don't understand the faith, may not have a concept of the faith, but God really could have been reaching their hearts. And hear me now, it was strategic by the enemy to try to make them believe and convince them that what we're doing is crazy. Do y'all hear me? The enemy is doing his best to stomp out the name of Jesus. And this is what brought me to this as I was sitting. I watched this video clip. And as I was sitting there and I was like, God, what do you want me to minister on to our people in the next month as I was preparing the series? He said, son, I want you to make my name great again. He said, tell the people my name must be great again, and it's got to start in the house of the Lord. In other words, he said, my people have to begin to reverence and honor me in a way that will cause the world to respect me again. Because the world looks at my people as, as a joke. Are y'all with me here? He looks at my people as if I don't mean anything. I don't matter that I'm not powerful enough to bring about change in their lives. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, because many of them are just faking it to make it. Do y'all hear me? They're pretending that they love me when they really don't. They're pretending to walk with me, to have a relationship with me when they really don't. Are y'all with me today? All right, you got to talk back to me. And so what he began to say, he said, I want to make a difference. I want there to be a difference, and I want my name to be great in the life of, him, of my people. And what I believe God is about to do is I believe God is about to shift the course of things in America and in our world. I believe he's about to change things around, and people are going to begin to see the greatness of God again. They're going to begin to see the power of God move again. I believe healing is about to break out like never before. I believe miracles are about to break out like never before and I'm preaching prophetically today because I want you to understand that God is preparing to, to use you look at somebody said God's gonna use you the day is gone that God is just going to use the pastors and the preacher but God wants to use the 
people to do his will. God wants to use you to heal the sick. God wants to use you to cast out devils. God wants to use you to raise the dead. God wants to use you to change lives. And you got to get out of a place of saying, I just go to church to where you realize, no, baby, I am the church. I am the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't just go to a building with four walls and listen to a pretty message, but I'm being made. I'm being shaped. I'm being developed. I'm being molded into who God created me to be. So look at what he said in Malachi. Let me get in my message today. Malachi 1, verse number 6. He says this right here. He says, a son, this is the amplified version, a son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am a father, where is my honors? I was preparing to preach. God kept saying that in my ear. He kept saying, where is my honors? honor for those of you that take notes i hope all of you take notes that's what i'm going to be preaching today where is my honor he says and if i'm a master where is the reverend fear do me says the lord of hosts to you O priest who despise my name you say how and in what way have we despised your name let me stop right there look i want to say this to you as he kept saying where is my honor honor what had happened the priests had gotten to a place within Israel that they despised God that means that they had put little value on who he was one day I was going along and I was thinking about marriage where well, the Bible said the marriage bed is the, the or marriage is honorable and the marriage bed is undefiled I said God what do you mean by honorable and I went and I began to research that word honorable and honor and what I found out is that word literally means precious I looked a little bit further and that word meant to have a high esteem and value upon which means God said the way I look at marriage is that I put a high value on it it's precious is not to be played with and toyed with and I thought about that as I was reading this God said wait a minute you got to have a certain value that you place on me and what God began to say me say to me he said where is my honor he said, my people don't place value on me like they used to. They don't love me like they used to. They don't desire me like they once did. How many of you can remember when you first got saved, you gave your life to the Lord, everything was about him. All you wanted to do was please him. All you wanted to do was live him. You wanted to represent him well. You wanted to be the best you can be, but somewhere along the way, we start to water down our relationship with God because we want to fit in with our friends. We start to water down God because we get a shamed around our co-workers we start to water down God because we don't want our family members to say oh you think you better than me now that you done found this Jesus well baby yes I do what do you want me to do think less of myself what do you want me to do think I'm nothing you don't realize I just found the savior of the world you don't realize he just pulled me out of my sin I was on my way to hell but he grabbed me and rescued me and you want me to act like it was nothing no he's done a great job change in my life and when you see him like that you don't let people shame you you don't let people put you down and you don't hide your Jesus the Bible declares you don't light a candle to put it under a bushel and hide it when the, you light a candle you put it out on the open you put it on the stand because it gives a light to everybody in the room how many of you know you are a light that God has set in the city that cannot be hid you are a light on the hill for somebody walking in darkness and you got to be willing to let your light shine the Bible says before men that they may see your good works and what are they going to do they are going to glorify God when you live for God when you stand for God the Bible declares that men see it and they give glory to God when you live holy they glorify God when you do what's right they glorify God but the Bible tells us that when the wicked are in charge what are you talking about pastor when the wicked when the wicked are in rule the world suffers when the wicked are in rule the world comes under trouble and chaos but God is looking for some real believers that will stand up and say I'm not going to be a part of the problem any longer but I will be a part of the solution if nobody else named the name of Christ I'll name him and I won't be ashamed I won't hide my relationship I won't hide where I am with God. 
but I'll live it out with everything in me. I'll walk in righteousness. I'll walk in honor to God. Let me break this down a little bit more. Here's what he said. He said, where is my honor? I was like, God, what do you mean? Where is my honor? So I looked it up in the text here to see what he meant by honor. Here is what he was saying. I looked up the word and the word literally means or it's a, a, a word that we use in scripture by definition. The word is called kabod. The word actually means weight. Everybody say weight. Here's what he said. He said, listen, where is my honor or where is my weight in your life? Let me ask you a question. How heavy is God in your life? Is God a light thing or have you given him his proper weight in your life? In other words, it's not supposed to be God is something you put on and you take off casually, but God is supposed to carry great weight in your life. You know when somebody can go in, when they are a mover and a shaker and they can make things happen, you say, oh yeah, that, pay, that person has weight. Do y'all hear me? God said, where is my weight in your life? Where is my cabal? Where is the weight of my glory that's supposed to rest on your life that you can't do what you want to do because I got so much influence in your life that before you do anything you remember me before you cuss anybody out you think about me y'all like y'all let me get real because if I keep preaching like this y'all be like yeah pastor that's good but let me come to your front door before you cuss somebody out the weight of God ought to say you know you can't do that I know they made you mad but you can't say that before before the enemy tempt you to steal where's the weight that says no you know my commandment you shall not steal don't you take nothing don't you steal a dime or oh, let me get home because y'all like pastor ain't no thief stop tilling stop stealing time off the clock at work you know your lunch hour is 60 minutes take your 60 minutes and get your butt back to work don't be taking 15 extra and 30 extra you stealing you're a thief oh yeah i'm coming to your front door he said where's the weight in my life where's the conviction that should be upon your life that you can't just do what you want to do whenever you want to do it and you have no regard for god so God was saying, he said, you don't value me anymore. Where's my honor? Where's the weight I'm supposed to have in your life? Hear me now. He wasn't talking about the world. He was talking to his people. What happens when the people of God no longer value God? What happens when the people of God no longer look to God? We do whatever we want to do. We become like people in the Old Testament. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. In other words, they lived how they wanted to live, and they thought it was okay. They did what they wanted to do, and they thought it was okay. But God said, I need you to rise up and begin to make my name great again. I need you to raise the standard of your life again. Whatever you got to get rid of, I want you to get rid of it this year. If you get smoking, get rid of those cigarettes. I'm the same God that can deliver you from those cigarettes if you've been drinking I can deliver you from alcohol because the world is waiting on you you telling me I shouldn't be drinking but you still drinking with me you telling me I shouldn't be smoking but you still smoking with me do y'all hear me if you sleeping with people you're not married to come on get cleaning up keep your clothes on are y'all with me in here because, see, it does you no good to know the truth and not live by it. The Bible said the word did not profit the people because they did not activate it with faith. It was not mixed with faith. You can hear the word all day long, but if you don't mix it with faith and put some action behind it, you will never know the power of it. He said, I'm looking for a people that will give me my honor back. My reverential fear again. Do you really fear God? Do you really fear God? Not just at church, but do you fear him at home? Is he, is he the guiding force of your life? Are you aware of his presence everywhere you go? Because in the Western world, the Western world has made God a Sunday God. Statistically, I was reading a statistic, I shared it with you last week, that the Western world says God and church is no longer relevant to life. And you wonder why they're shooting up schools. 
You wonder why so many people are being diagnosed with all kind of mental illness. Because you got propaganda in the media saying that I don't want my vice president speaking in tongues. I want the president, the vice president, all his cabinet. I want all of them speaking in tongues. I want all of them talking to Jesus and letting Jesus talk back to them. That ain't mental illness. Sound like to me that's the fear of the Lord. That's wisdom so that God can lead our nation away from destruction and back to prosperity oh but we got to get it right with God just like the White House needs to turn to God your house needs to turn to God you can't be critical of the president and his cabinet before you critical of your own house look at you and your spouse and look at you and your children is your house a holy house is your house a godly house is the fear of the Lord in your house is the presence of God in your house is God honored in your house does he have weight in your house because you got to get to a place where you say no this is a house this is the house of God whatever your address is and there's certain things that can't go on in this house certain things that won't be said in this house I love my children but there's certain things they're not going to do in my house Certain things they're not going to say in my house because this house honors God. Pastor, I pay the mortgage. Well, it's God that gave you the ability to make the money you make to pay it. While you sit up in there feeling good in your house, don't you know God could blow on it and your house come to nothing? But will you honor God with what you have? What do you do with your vehicle? See, I'm talking about you now. When you ride in your car, do you let people get in your car and put your radio on whatever they want to put it on? Do they smoke in your ride? Well, I can't tell them not to smoke, but I can tell you you can't ride with me. If you got to smoke, find another ride. You're not putting that alcohol, you're not putting stuff in my vehicle. If you don't like it, hey, you got two feet, use them. You got to get to a place to where you have a standard. Everybody shout standard. The church has to get back to a place. Believers have to get back to a place where they have standards in God. And stop watering down your relationship with him. Because we are leading people away from Christ with our own hypocrisy. That's what it's called. With your own hypocrisy, you will lead men away from Christ. I got to move on. Let me show you this right here. Go with me to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15, verse number 8 and verse number 9. I got to show you this right here because this is what God began to say to me. He began to show me that, listen, people are going through the motions, the motions of church, the motions of godliness. I know this may not jump and shout you, but if you love Jesus, it will. Because you understand that he is the most important thing in your life. It's not about a blessing. It's not about a house. It's not about a car, but it's about the name of Jesus. And at some point, the people have got to get back to honoring God. Look at what he says right here. He says, these people Matthew 15 and 8. These people draw near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are for a hold off and are far away from me. He said, uselessly do they worship me, for they teach as doctrines the commands of men. He said, they just talking good, but what they saying is not in their heart. It sounds good. Hear me now. You can talk it all day long, but here's the question. When are you going to live what you talk? When are you going to walk the talk that you talk so well? My friend, a uh, pastor that I know in another state, he made a post yesterday on Facebook. He said, Christian quotes will not get you into heaven. Please hear me now. You can post on social media all of the Bible scriptures, Bible verses, Christian quotes of hope, joy, peace, and happiness, and love all you want to. But if you don't live that stuff, you're going to stand before God, and he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. But God, I posted in your name. Go and get away from me. I never knew you. See, it's not about what you post on social media. It's about how you live. It's about a relationship. Do you know him and does he know you? Because when you really know him, you have a conviction about him. When you know him, he has a weight in your life. 
And when he says don't do something, you don't do it for his glory. When he says don't go here, you won't go there for you for his glory. Hear me now. When he tell you break up with that person. Oh, yeah. You will break up with him because you'll be like, God ain't in this. Don't call me no more. Lose my number. When my wife and I got ready to get married, we prayed and we asked God, God, if this is of you, then we want you to confirm it and tell us this is of you and we'll get married. But if it's not of you, then let us know and we'll go our separate way. I told my wife, you lose my number and I'm going to lose yours and we'll never talk again. Because if God's not in it, I don't want it. Because everything in your life should be for the glory of God. Not just lip service. God doesn't just want you talking good. He wants you to live what you talk. He wants you to live. I, I hear many people talk a lot of good stuff, but they don't live it. It sounds good. Not just people, but even leaders. When you get through talking it, when you get through preaching it, this is for me too. I got to live it. See, see, how many of y'all, how many of you all would follow me if I preached one thing and lived another? How many of y'all would keep coming in this church week after week if I preach, be faithful to your spouse, but yet you knew I had a girlfriend on the side? How many of you would keep believing and going along if you knew I was saying pay your tithes, but I was robbing God myself? Do y'all hear me? See, it can't just be what you talk. It has to be what you live. Because God is not looking for good talkers. Talkers come a dime a dozen. Let me ask you this. How many of y'all want to be married or in relationship with somebody that talk good but don't ever back up their word? They love you, but they cheat on you. They lie to you. They steal from you. But they tell you they love you more than anything else in the world. See, come on. Let's talk about it. They tell you you're so wonderful. You're so great. You're the most amazing person in my life. And then they do you dirty every chance they get. No, baby, you don't mean what you say. You just want to appease me with your words, but let me see your life. See, all of us tell a story. You tell a story with your mouth, and you tell a story with the way you live. And the way you live tells the truth while your mouth can say whatever it wants to say. God is looking for a people that will stop talking about it and will start being about it. Because hear me now, as I wrap this up, the God that we serve is not walking us through a course and through a path that has no power. Listen, your walk with God was never meant to be religious. It was never meant to be powerless. It was meant to be something that the whole world could see God working supernaturally through your life. Look at what he said in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, verse number 1. Come on, I got two more verses and we're going to roll here. He said, 2 Timothy, let's go there. 2 Timothy 3. Verse 1 through 5, I'm just going to read the whole thing real fast. He said, this know also that in the last days, I'm reading King James, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I believe we're in that day right now. He said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away here's what he said he said stop being friends with people who are fake and phony stop playing with people who don't really want God for real but if you want him for real you want to be around real people he said because they have a form of godless they know what to say they know when to say it they know how to say it but they deny the power thereof ain't no power in them the Bible said they are clouds without rain in other words it looked like rain but ain't no water ever falling it looked like they got something making a lot of noise with thunder but ain't nothing in it God doesn't want you to be just a noise maker but he wants you to move and shake something he wants you to make things happen in your life and so he said I've given you power over all the power of the devil he didn't give you power to look cute he gave you power to cast them out he gave you power to change your life he gave you power to change the lives of others he said but don't be don't be deceived having a form of godliness while denying the power thereof you say the right thing you do the right thing but no powers in it the Christian faith was meant to be powerful not powerless he did not intend for us to preach stuff that we could not prove through the demonstration of power 
And so we have to get sick of people who have wonderful psychology and wonderful ideas and fancy words that sound good, but you can't prove nothing. If you're going to preach it, you ought to be able to back it up. If you preach healing, healing ought to manifest. If you preach deliverance, demons ought to be cast out. If you preach salvation, souls ought to get saved. Do you hear me? The gospel was meant to be powerful, not to be a form, not to be a ritual, not to be religious. Because now we live in a day where people dance because it's cute. They dance because they want to go viral on social media. Y'all are hearing me in here. They got cute little dances that look good and they make people feel good that they practice at home in their bathroom and then they come to church and when the musicians get to playing, they run up on the altar in the front to make sure the camera catch them. Because they want everybody to see them prance before the people of God. But I can remember a day that when I was a little boy, we would be in service and the saints would start dancing and praising God. I'm about to get excited because I just had a memory. The saints would start dancing and they would begin to praise God. And while they were praising God, a demon would manifest. Y'all are hearing me in here. Because they praise what's for real. And when they begin to praise God, the atmosphere would change. The heat and the fire of God would hit the house. And demons couldn't stay in there any longer. Healing would manifest. People who had cancer and tumors would look up and be like, I got healed in the praise. Stuff would fall off of their bodies because they would get healed in the midst of praise. But now we praise God and the devil run up and praise right there with us. Why? Because you're performing and you have no power. But God said I'm looking for people that won't put on a performance anymore, but they got real power. That when the praise team would sing, they would sing with power. They don't sing because they like the song they sing because they love God they don't sing because it sounds good they sing because they want the glory of God to fall on the house the cabal the weight of God to hit the house friends God bless you listen I'm so sorry but I'm out of time today listen I know you've been touched tremendously by the word of the Lord on today God is so awesome and so amazing that he continues to do great things in the lives of his people. Listen, I want you to come in fellowship with us this Sunday at the Truth Church, 2019 Ball Road, right here in the beautiful city of Memphis, Tennessee. I promise you, your life will never be the same. The way the Spirit of God moves among his people, the way the power of God is breaking the chains and strongholds off people's lives. Listen, you need to be here. You need to get to the Truth Church and experience it for yourself. I can't tell you about it. I can't explain it. It's an encounter that you just have to experience, all right? I look forward to seeing you real soon. And until then, I'll see you next week on the Truth Encounter. Be blessed.